The hardest part was not remembering the trauma but holding all the questions I had. What was I going to do if the perpetrator was or was not caught? How was I going to continue living? Would this affect my future romantic relationships? I was jogging in my estate and while running past a particular house, a guy who had been watching me from afar opened his gate and attempted to chat me up when I was nearing. When I ignored his questions, he playfully tried to grab me from the side. Terrified, I sprinted home. Prior to this incident, I went for church counselling regarding other similar incidents. And while going through my case file, my counsellor asked about the assault incidents. But after I told her everything that had happened, she glossed over it and remarked, but these things will never happen again, right? Since then, I never opened up about my assault to my church leaders. In church, we always say, how can we support brothers and sisters who are fighting this sin? But we don't often say, how can we support brothers and sisters who have been hurt by the sins of others? At least in my experience, there has not been a specific space for it. The hurting are not looking for a solution first, but a space to exit the closets of their past. I hope we will become a church that actively listens to people who are hurting too. I think that this person really hit the nail on the head. How can we support brothers and sisters who have been hurt by the sins of others? I think safe spaces are so important and sometimes some churches gloss over it by praying once or twice for you. It's a little bit fairy godmother with the wand situation. It doesn't. Most of the time, it doesn't usually work like that because the person needs a safe space to process. Sometimes the textbook answer is forgive the person. But forgiveness as a practice demands deep searching and conversing about the matter at hand. Uh, because what are we forgiving the person about? So that uh, demands us to go into the various tears of hurt and pain and disappointment. Oh, first few words, they're not very good. I was at a Cell Leaders training program and there was worship before the program. And this really old man beside me offered to share his hymn book with me. So I moved in to share it with him. Then he put his hand below my waist, around my butt area and tried to pull me closer. I couldn't believe it had happened. I was angry and I moved away immediately. I shared my experience with a pastor and he said he would look out for this person to make sure this wouldn't happen again. But I didn't hear any further from the church. Seeing that there was no discipline or action taken against this person made me feel that there wasn't a point in talking about it any further. Maybe this matter would have been taken more seriously if I was a girl instead of a guy. Yikes, it's church. Uh. I think especially the last line, right, when he talks about how um, it would be taken more seriously if he was a girl instead of a guy. Sexual assault, in this sense, has no preferred sex. That everybody is, uh, is equally vulnerable to it. And that there should be a seriousness to, to either party, la, I think. Maybe on hindsight, it's worse for guys because they never expect it to happen to them. Like, society doesn't even equip a guy for what happens when they are violated. I felt really upset because the matter was surfaced. So there is no reason for the leadership of the pastor not to have followed up meaningfully with this uh, victim. I don't want to sound as if I am speaking out for the pastor or the leadership. But sometimes, maybe the lack of understanding about sexual assault within the church uh, could cause leaders to not believe that it had happened. But we must address. We must address the issue. We cannot allow uh, such things to, to take place. If we do, um, it, it's like just sweeping problems under the carpet. A lot of times when we talk about um, getting support from the church, it's not necessarily to to condemn or like to completely cancel the person who did wrong. You know all of us, we know all of us fall short, but I think accountability and, and support in, in the most holistic sense, whether it's mental, spiritual, even physical trauma in this case, it's, it's really important. 
I was on the MRT when I saw a man inappropriately touching a fellow commuter's chest. She got up almost immediately and walked away without looking back. Then he got up and sat next to me. I remember being frozen in shock by his boldness. He intentionally angled his arm as he reached for his phone in the front pocket of his pants, such that his elbow would brush against my underboob. He would slide his phone back into his pocket and repeat the process again. The hardest part was not remembering the trauma, but holding all the questions I had. What was I going to do if the perpetrator was or was not caught? How was I going to continue living? Would this affect my future romantic relationships? I experienced occasional trauma even though I actively seek to be at peace with the circumstances. What helped was the group of sisters I had confided in. They offered prayer and support and celebrated with me when the case closed. I too was assaulted when I was about 13 years old uh, on a train. I refused to take the MRT for, for many, many years because of that initial thought, that the, the trauma from, from that time. Uh, and even, even till today, sometimes when I step onto the MRT or I see MRT, there is a slight tinge of, of fear. But you know, the thing is, do we allow those things to hold us back? Do we allow those things to really um, fester in our hearts? We may remember, but we don't allow those things to, to affect us going forward. And I think that's, that's more uh, biblical. Being a victim of sexual assault myself, sometimes the inability to tell somebody could make us feel like we are suffocated in a gas chamber because I couldn't share so I don't have someone to process with me deeply that brings about healing and restoration. And so I found myself confronted by the Holy Spirit about this part of my life. I think if the church cannot be a safe place for pastors, then I think the church is really not a safe place for anyone. So I come to that conclusion that my wife and myself, my family, we are like an open book to the church community. So I'm very thankful that I think, though the church is not perfect, we are seeing a little bit more openness for different people from different walks of life to come out and come home to the Father with our brokenness. I was on the train with two friends and stood beside the transparent panel between the train door and the seats. I noticed two men who were looking at me, staring me up and down. I felt a little uncomfortable, but dismissed it as just another occasion of unwanted male gaze. After five to ten minutes, I felt someone touch me below my dress. I was really stunned and looked up, only to notice a man grinning. The other man made eye contact with him and sniggered. I froze, realising what had happened. I had been violated. I felt disgusted and confused. These two men didn't converse and didn't seem to know each other, but somehow united at that inappropriate action. It felt like just another game they had won, in some form of power play, where the women are left helpless. It's very saddening to see these are things that um, like my female friends have to put up with as well. Lah. I don't think it should be the norm by any, by any means, and I don't think it should be something that people have to constantly worry about. But yet, like I've seen, right, people go on the train and yet there are still instances where sexual assault is still a thing. Lah. I think as kids, I, I wish that we were, we were taught like how to, how to have compassion, what it means to um, honour, honour someone else's uh, life, honour someone else's body. I think those are, those are things that I wish was taught or discussed in class at, at a super young age. When I read it, I felt um, for the first time in a long while placed in the position of someone who feel at the bottom of a power play. Because there's such an abuse of power, I felt the, the, the thing that God put in my heart was that gentleness and kindness can go to places where power cannot. And, and gentleness and kindness are the means that God used to invoke healing in 
our lives in those areas of disappointment, betrayal and hurt. This is a tremendous opportunity for the church to rise up and be that place of comfort for people who are willing to be open about their struggles and uh, sexual assault experiences.